boys and girls, as you can see, I'm back in my garden. And I'm sad we can't all be together, but I am glad we can still do Sunday school like this. Now, over the last few weeks, we've been learning with the help of QuizWorks about what the Bible teaches us about suffering. About those not-so-fun times when things are hard and they don't make sense. Well, before we cross over to QuizWorks for the next question that the puppets have, we're going to learn a verse from the Bible that helps us to remember that God is still good. He is still loving and he is still in control. So I'm going to read it to you and then we're going to teach it with some actions. So the verse I'm reading is from Romans chapter 8 verse 28 and it says, In all things God's working for the good of those who love him. Are you ready to learn it and get some actions to go with it? Okay, so the first part goes like this. In all things, God's working for the good, the good of those who love him. Your turn. In all things, God's working for the good, the good of those who love him. Now, that's the verse. But this next part is going to help us to understand what the verse is and isn't teaching us. And so it carries on like this. And what is that good, you ask? I say, what is that good? Your turn. And what is that good, you ask? I say, what is that good? Now... We're going to answer it. So are you ready to answer it? It goes like this. It's to be made like his son, Jesus. To be made like his son. Your turn. To be made like his son, Jesus. To be made like his son. You guys are doing well. Now, it's important to know that when the Bible promises that in all things God is working for the good of those who love him, it's not saying nothing bad will ever happen. No, you see, God's promise of good things is that we will be made like his son, Jesus. So the Bible promises that in all things, good things and bad things, that God will help us to grow to be more like Jesus. And that is the best thing that can happen to us. Okay, now we've got to finish off the verse. And it goes like this. We've got to say where it comes from. It's Romans 8 verse 28. Okay, your turn. Romans 8 verse 28. Okay, but now we're actually going to say that a few times. So we're going to go... Romans 8 verse 28, Romans 8 verse 28, Romans 8, 8 verse 28, Romans 8 verse 28, and we're going to, okay, you got it, your turn, Romans 8 verse 28, Romans 8 verse 28, Romans 8 verse 28, Romans 8 verse 28, don't forget, Good job. Now, we're going to say it one more time together, but I want you guys to practice it over the week because next week we are going to wrap it together. So you need to come with your coolest wrap gear. Shades, maybe a cap side on. You figure it out, but you're going to practice it and we're going to wrap it together next week. But for now, we're going to go through it with the actions all together. Are you ready? In all things, God's working for the good, the good of those who love him. And what is that good, you ask? I say, what is that good? It's to be made like his son, Jesus, to be made like his son. Romans 8 verse 28 Romans 8 verse 28, Romans 8 verse 28, Romans 8 verse 28. Good job, guys. Let's cross over to QuizWorks and hear what they are going to ask this week.
Hi everyone, I'm Matt. Today we're going to keep thinking about what the Bible teaches on the huge topic of suffering. All right, Matt, I'm nearly there. Okay. Yeah, I'll be back in a sec. R- right. Well, so far we've looked at two questions. Let's have a look at our suffering board. Uh, the first question that we looked at was why is there suffering? And we saw that the Bible has lots of answers and some not answers. Uh, And at least part of the answer is that people disobeyed God, but (laughs) there's more to it than that. But then we saw that God is always good, God is always loving, and God is always in control. And then last time, we looked at the question, why do bad things happen to good people? And we saw that at least part of the Bible's answer is that in all things, God's working for the good, the good of those who love him. All right, Matt, I'm back. <laughs> so you are. Um, everyone, this is my friend Chick. Oh, hi, everyone. Chick, uh, do you have the third question for our question board? I certainly do. Excellent. Does God get it? Does God get it? Yeah. Does God get it? Does he understand? I'm not sure I understand. Well, we think it's all very nice that God's always good and always loving and always in control. Yeah? But we don't think it's fair that he's off riding on his giant super-sized skateboard and, and eating delicious worms while we're made to suffer. Riding on a giant super-sized skateboard eating delicious worms? Yeah, well, that's what I'd do if I was God. <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and so we don't think it's very fair. So, so does God get it? Does he understand how awful suffering is? Well, Chick, that... That is a great question. Yeah, we thought so too. So so does he get it? Does he get it, Matt? Yes. Yes, God does get it. Really? R- really. See, see, the Bible teaches us that Jesus is God. In fact, the Bible teaches us that Jesus is God the Son. What? Jesus is God the Son? Yeah, the Bible shows us that Jesus is God the Son. So he is always good, always loving, and always in control. Whoa! No way! I thought Jesus was a human! Well, well, he is a human. The Bible teaches us that Jesus is fully God and fully human. What? Fully God and fully human? That's what the Bible shows us, that Jesus was 100% human and 100% God. Whoa! This is mind-blowing stuff! It is, but what's important for, for your question is that the Bible tells us that Jesus, God the Son, He knew suffering just like us. God knew suffering? Yeah, but more than just that, the Bible tells us that Jesus, God the Son, knew that suffering will not win in the end. Wow, Matt, how do you know all this stuff? That is what the Bible tells us. Let's watch this story. It was dark in the garden as Jesus, God the Son, knelt to pray. Jesus was overwhelmed with sorrow as he prayed to God the Father. Father, please take this cup from me. As Jesus stood, a crowd of soldiers appeared, being led by one of Jesus' closest followers. That's the one. Take him. And so Jesus was betrayed by a friend, arrested by soldiers, and taken away for trial. Jesus, God the Son, knew suffering as he was arrested and betrayed. Yet Jesus, God the Son, knew suffering would not win in the end. Peter, one of Jesus' closest friends, followed the arrested Jesus to a courtyard. When Peter arrived, a servant girl saw him. Aren't you one of Jesus' friends? Peter was terrified. No way, I don't even know him. Because it was cold, Peter went and stood by the fire. One of the men standing there said, You are one of Jesus' friends. Again, Peter denied it. What? No way! Then a third person. I'm sure I saw you with Jesus. I don't even know him! Jesus' closest friend denied even knowing Jesus. Jesus, God the Son, knew suffering as he was let down and rejected by a best friend. And yet Jesus, God the Son, knew suffering would not win in the end. Everyone knew that Jesus had done nothing wrong. But still he was unjustly sentenced to die on a cross. But as Jesus was dying, the soldiers guarding him were playing a game. As Jesus gasped for breath, they were shouting, Oh goody, I rolled a six. Jesus, God the Son, 
new suffering as he faced injustice, pain, and being treated as nothing. And yet Jesus, God the Son, knew suffering would not win in the end. Because three days later, Mary Magdalene, one of Jesus' closest followers, cried as she walked. Jesus, her friend and master, had been killed and taken from her. As Mary arrived at the tomb, she was sure that death and suffering had won. But then, Mary. Jesus was there, alive again! He had defeated death and suffering. While Jesus, God the Son, knew suffering, Jesus, God the Son, knew suffering would not win in the end. Mary ran and found Jesus' other friends. Jesus is alive! He's alive! I've seen him! But that seemed too hard to believe. Don't be silly. Dead people don't come back to life. Suffering has won! But while they all stood sad and upset, suddenly, peace be with you. <gasps> Jesus was there, alive again, standing in the room with them. Jesus had defeated death and suffering. While Jesus, God the Son, knew suffering, Jesus, God the Son, knew suffering would not win in the end. Oh, well, Matt, that was so cool. Yeah, and all of those are true stories taken from the Bible. So, so God does get it. He does understand what it's like to suffer. Yeah, this is one of the great and unique things about what Christians believe and, and, and about what the Bible teaches. God isn't just far off doing his own thing. Yeah, like riding on his super-sized skateboard <laughs> eating big delicious worms. Exactly. The God of the Bible, he knows suffering because he has experienced suffering. Yeah, and he knew suffering would not win in the end. Exactly. And so we can know that as well. Suffering is real and it is awful, but it will not win in the end. And we're going to think a bit more about that next time. Oh, awesome. Well, and you just answered another question. I have. You asked, does God get it? Does he understand? Well, the answer is yes. Uh, yes, Jesus, God the Son, he knew suffering. But we also saw that Jesus, God the Son, knew that suffering would not win in the end. Oh, well, Matt. Oh, thank you for that. No worries, Chick. Oh, I'm going to go off now and ride my normal size skateboard and eat some delicious worms. <laughs> Sounds good. You go do that. Okay, bye. Well, suffering is awful. And when we suffer, it can be really hard. But when we suffer, we can think about Jesus, God the Son. Because today, we've seen that we can take great comfort from the fact that the God who is always good, who is always loving, who is always in control, he understands. Because Jesus, God the Son, knew suffering. But we can also see that we can take great comfort from the fact that Jesus, God the Son, knew that suffering will not win in the end. And so we can know that as well. And if something that we talked about today makes you sad, make sure you talk to somebody you know. Maybe it's your mum or your dad or, or people who look after you. Or maybe it's somebody at church. Or maybe it's just someone you know who loves you and who loves Jesus as well. All right, we'll see you next time. So in today's video, Chick asked the question, does God understand suffering? And the Bible's answer is yes, God does understand suffering. Because the Bible tells us that Jesus is God. And Jesus, being God's son, suffered for us when he died on the cross. But we also learned that suffering will not win in the end because Jesus defeated death and suffering. Isn't that great news? So I've got some questions for you to think about and answer. Number one, how does it make you feel to know that God understands our suffering? Number two, 
How do we know that God understands our suffering? And how can knowing this help us when we're going through suffering or a friend is going through suffering? And number three, what's the greatest news about who's going to win in the end? And how is that great news for you and for me? Take some time to answer those, but first I'm going to pray, and then you're going to answer those questions. Okay, let's close our eyes and pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you understand the suffering we go through, that you know what it's like to be hurt and struggling and rejected. Thank you that when we are suffering, we know that you are there and we can talk to you and you will help us. Thank you that we know you have already defeated suffering and it will not win. Please help us to trust you and know that you are growing us to be more like Jesus in the good times and the bad times. Amen. Go answer those questions. See you all next week ready to wrap our Romans 8 verse 28. Bye guys.